blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Station of power in the world, music, dance, and drama at Kingdom Life World Conference '97. About my Jesus, He died on Calvary. He died to save you and me. He died to set us free. Has anybody heard about my Jesus? He died, yes, he did. He died on Calvary. Come in, Jesus. I recommend. 
Jesus. I recommend Jesus. He has his all who is there. I wonder if you have heard of him. Jesus, he is the greatest friend. I wonder if you've heard about Jesus. Your friends will fail you. Yes, they will, but Jesus will never, he'll never, he'll never. Nobody can die for you. No, no. Nobody can take your pain. Have you heard? Yes, Jesus loves you and you and you and you. Have you heard? Come on, let's tell them that Jesus loves them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Jesus, He loves you. In this you don't know, He loves you.
Now put your hands together for Jesus. Let me hear you say, Big Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. The church spent many years in mortuary, and now she's alive and alive forevermore. Welcome back to the family of God Fellowship. The year of the dawning of a new day. When Dr. Michael Konkwo gave me invitation for this conference, which he has no reason to do, <laughs> except that you have to invite someone for calling sick. As a brother and as a friend and as my deputy, we have worked together now for the last two years to see the promotion of the kingdom of God in this country more than ever before. And I'm grateful to God for this privilege. The theme of the convention or conference is the manifestation of the sons of God. From my little vocabulary explanation, the manifest is to bring forth that which has been hiding. I'm not going by Michael West, I'm going to Idaho and East. <laughs> Michael West live in the West and I'm in the East. So, <laughs> To manifest is the authenticated language of the not visible but available. To bring forth to birth that which God promised. And to manifest is to bring the true expression of that which exists but has not been invisible sight to manifest is to bring about the covenant and the promise of God to you and me and when I read that I said okay when was the first time man manifested the ability of the invisible God and incidentally, the scripture that came to my mind is the one that I was seduced with for 30 years to religiously believe that God was quarreling with man. Until I had an insight that there's nothing you become that frightens God. You didn't hear me. And many of you are born alive and die ambitionless. And in a world of competition, learn to compete than to complain. Competition is the part of life. Compliment is an agreement that what your brother is doing is good. Join him. But to compete healthily is the will of God. Many, 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 many of us have come to this stage where we sing the song in the church. Whatever we be, we be. And it's not true. Your mouth can give you grace to mount up. You can mount up as you mount up. If you have the ability of God's language, just as the ego mounts up, you can use your mouth to mount up, then mount up. Two languages at the same time. I mounted myself up as I mounted up. There were spirits of degradation. There were spirits of inabilities and incapability in this whole nation. And 39 years ago when I came to the ministry, there were not one kind of a being that preached in Nigeria that to be blessed was the will of God. All the pastors I met at the scene sang songs like by and by in the suite. And many of the pastors that I met who were Pentecostals and charismatic had no character of the characteristics of God. And I began to ask God questions. Why is it that when America sends an ambassador to Romania, he behaves like an American? He doesn't become a Romanian by poverty. 
He doesn't become a saxophone by admiration. He tells everyone, I'm sent by the United States of America. But why is it that the ambassadors of God behave like vultures? I began to question God. And Bishop Mike, you'll be shocked to know what God told me. He said, they know the church, but they don't know me, the owner of the church. And no transformation can take place in any man's life, no matter how religiously you are religious, unless you find Christ. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? I'm not here to preach salvation message. If you haven't been saved for the last seven days, this 30 minutes will not be enough to save you. And you are in the church. Did you hear me? I know the man of God that I sacrificed this Sunday to come and stand by. He's a versatile man. He's a man of amiable character. He's rugged and rude in character. Of and I'm glad. He knows me. I have no time to flatter. Because only flatter, I flatter people. <laughs> So God told me, create the awareness into people's mind that desirelessness is a destruction. So let's start from Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. And many of you, by the time I finish, you are going to lose some of your friends and make new ones. <laughs> I've done that for many years. I resigned from the committee of you cannot do it. I was the chairman of Doubt and Unbelief Association of Nigeria. Until I got born again to be bound to do the will of God. Verse 1. Everybody say Genesis 11. Genesis 11. I didn't hear you. Talk like a person who is alive. Yeah. You know that Genesis can generate. An energy that can make no light to be the other light. Verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. The whole earth. Say that everybody. The whole earth. I didn't hear you. The whole earth. Do it with me. The whole earth. The whole earth. Was of one language, was of one language. and one speech. Where there is unity, there's power. Verse 2. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Snar and they dwelt there. Verse 3. And they said one to another, Go to let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone. And slim had they for mortar. Verse 4. And they said, Go to let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. Say with me, Come, let us go. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. God will give you grace to inaugurate. <laughs> Until you write, I'm not going to say anything. I don't waste my words. Very expensive. <laughs> There's nothing that you initiate that God will not give you grace to inaugurate. I believe in the midst of these people who were one language and one tribe and one tongue, one man must be the initiator who said, My come. Come, say that to everybody. Come. I didn't hear you. Come. Say it again. Come. Let us say us. us. Go. Go forward. forward. 
They stood in one place of confidence and comfort. And one of them said, we can break the limit. Say with me, I will break the limit. I will break the limit. I didn't hear you. I will break the limit. Try it again. I will break the limit. You can break the limit of high jump. You can break the limit of four forty. You can break the limit of hundred years. When you are now, well, you are younger, too, too young to think about that. <laughs> In my time, almost sixty years ago, there was nobody that jumped seven feet. Belo Osage of USC Benin retired, was the first Nigerian to jump six foot four in 1956. <laughs> that few years ago. <laughs> he made it and won Olympic prize of high jump, higher jumper. Find out in 1996. Was it 96 Olympic or 95? 96. Find out what the high jumper jump. Things are no more the same. People who sing, take me back, dear Lord. You don't need to pray for another reason to backslide. If you are singing, take me back, dear Lord. The high jump of today is different from the high jump of 40 years ago. The poor vote of today is different. The record holder of the world pole vault today is almost 19 feet from the ground. The high jump of today is almost 8 feet from the ground. The days of I cannot do something new must expire in your life. Yeah. And every day, Bishop Mike, as you grow older with your dear wife, look for friends that are so ambitious that when you say to them, God gave me a brand new Mercedes 500, somebody who will not jealous what God has done for you is who you need. Don't talk to a man who is afraid of your progress. And don't connive and co-host a person who whatever you do threatens. If I came here this morning and saw this choir, if I wasn't having choir, let me not say more than that. <laughs> you know what David said? My feet almost fell in there. <laughs> but because I'm so used to what you did this morning, I was joining you to say, Amen. Amen. It was God God. Amen. 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 I have no reason to jealous you because the effort you are making is effortful to achieve higher heights. But you must not relate, and I'm saying this to everybody, to anyone who you say, thank God, I just built a new house. And he says, are you still a Christian? <laughs> Don't relate too close to a man whose will is to draw you back in faith. I hope you businessmen are hearing this. <laughs> there are successes that are pleasing to God. One man said to these lots of people, come to let us go. And they moved. The Bible said, later the same thing said, come, let's burn bricks and make us stones and mortar and build a city and a tower Say with me, time of doing nothing is over in my life. I can build a city and tower. Say it loud. One more time, I can build a city and tower. Let us, U.S., build. Us, when we dedicated CPM, you heard my message. Set a standard. And I'm here this morning to challenge you to your new height. All you have done now is infantry elementary section. <laughs> the Lord told me, you can ask my executive assistant, for the last three months, this message I preached, and he told me to tell you. All you have done in the last 20 years are preparing you for new heights. So you are about to start your ministry from today. 
You hear me, prophet? I think I'm the only prophet in Nigeria who doesn't charge for prophecy. <laughs> but God told me since three months, August this year, that everything you have done here is preparing you for what you want to do for God. Amen. And I'm not afraid to tell you that because I know you are a go-setter, you can become a go-getter. Somebody say loud, amen. amen. Now come, Bishop, and see what they said here. Let me hear you say, come, let us build a city. Come, and a tower. Whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name. Whether you admit it or not, what we were taught by religious people for the last 30 years about this is that God saw the tower. He was so afraid that man was coming to meet him that he decided to come down in anger. Now, let me please explain this. The Bible says the heaven is the throne of God and the earth is his foot too. And my Bible says, and your Bible says, our God is the most high. How high can anything be high to fall? How many of you are legal luminaires here? You are a lawyer by profession. I put it to you that you cannot improve on God. <laughs> if you are a son, I may say, I have my sanity to challenge your sanness. <laughs> Come, say that to everybody. Let us build us a city. Take the challenge from me. Building a village is enough. It's time to build us a city. Building a cathedral is okay. It's time to build towers. Let the Christian become the owners of the first bank that competes with Central Bank. Amen. Let Christian become the owners of new hotels in Lagos and Abuja that can make nonsense of government hotels. Amen. Ambition is the will of God. And the seed of greatness is in you and is in me. When God said, go into the world and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, he knew there was going to be competition and contest. But he gave us a promise, subdue the earth. What we are giving power to subdue cannot relegate us. Is anybody hearing me this morning? When I came to the ministry, Bishop Mike, the greatest complaint was that the church was a nuisance. Incapable of getting a new car. Incapable of building a church. Especially the Pandora's car. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa 
America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Somebody say big hallelujah. Who among your friends said to you in the last one week, this bungalow we are occupying now is too small for us? Who among your friends challenged your yesterday's maximum to compare it to become today's minimum? Who is your friend who said to you, the Lord blessed you last year with 10 million naira, and I'm glad to tell you I made 100 million. Who is that your friend? And that's who you need. Manifesting as a son and a daughter of God. This group, we are the first to say, 
If God can live in heaven, we can build a tower to meet it. And God was not frightened by their tower. I will soon tell you what God was not too happy about. Not about the tower, not about the city. But listen to verse 5, everybody. Verse 5. Read it with me loud, everybody. One, two, go. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower with the children of men build them. Stand to your feet, everyone. Please help somebody next to you to say, let's stand together. Yes, carry your wife up, or if your baby is carrying you, carry the baby now. God came down. I'm not sure you are hearing me. Say with me, God came down. God came down. To earth. To see the city and the tower with the sons of men have built it. What is that thing you have done that attracted God's attention? How many towers? How many cities? Bishop, my God left his throne. That's the Bible. And came down. Oh, that that day will come. That the grace of God will push you so far that God will say, That's my son, in whom I am well pleased. Oh, that that day will come. And I say this to you all in Lagos that your ambition will not be to make a living hand to mouth. That your ambition will not be for two ends to meet. I was telling them in Benin on Friday when I landed, I arrived this country two days ago. I said, people who fight to make two ends meet can never meet. The end of my foot and my head, they don't meet. My front and my back, they don't meet. My ambition is not to make two ends meet, but to make my life meet the need of people. For to be rich is to reach other people. A massive wealth for your personal consumption is poverty in disguise. Yes, you didn't hear me. Yes, Say with me to be rich. R I C H is to R E A C H people. To be rich is to rich people. All of you live in a town, the most religious town we have in Africa. Where you can buy handkerchief, you can buy holy oil, you can buy towel, you can buy broom. You can. You are looking for many, many, many magicians that are playing your oracle in the name of miracle, and it doesn't last. To tie handkerchief in your car is not the will of God. Faith does not come by handkerchief. Faith does not come by bottle of oil. Faith does not come by broom in the back of your car. And faith does not come by falling down and rising up. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And I'm glad that you have preached the word here. Challenge, yet we stood the time. January 4th, next year, which is about five weeks away, will be 40 years I started preaching. I've never added anything to Christ, and I need nothing outside him. Ask anybody who knew me 30 years ago. I've never sold broom to make a living. I've never sold oil to make a living. I've never sold handkerchief to make a living. I've never sold any sellable candle, camphor, red beret, green beret, anything sellable. Nothing can be added to the grace of God. And what God cannot do, no man can improve on it. If you love the Lord, say big amen. amen. Say with me one more time, God came down, God came down. To, see to see the city, the city. and the tower, and the tower with man built. What have you done to attract the presence of God? What has God used you to do? Remember the Bible said the land was plain. When you bought this land a few years ago, in your absence, Dr. Boye just brought me here. And he said, can you advise your friend 
about this place. I said, I will not talk to him until he finish. <laughs> the swamp, the swamp, the swamp in this area can make any man backslide if he cannot front slide. <laughs> the million you sank in the floor here to get a ground out of water could have caused the weakest man to say, Where is God? More than 10 times I have come here without seeing you and I didn't look for you. I made sure you are not around. And when I'm coming, I put the first card with the red so that your people don't know who I am. <laughs> we are here today because one man said it can be done. Yeah. Become a possibilitarian. Help yourself. Don't go to Presbyterian church or become a possibilitarian. Sit down and say amen. amen. You can become a possibilitarian. Let me hear you say, all things are possible. All things are possible. To him that believes. All things are possible. To him that believes. Let me hear you say, nothing shall be impossible. Matthew 17, 20, nothing shall be possible unto you. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. All things are possible to him that believes. Luke chapter 9 is possible. Matthew 7 says, whatever we ask, we can receive. John 13 says, it's possible for us to have the kingdom of God. And these men and women built a city and a tower. And God was attracted. And God came down. Now I'm nearing my message. And I have five minutes to finish. Praise team, come here. Hurry up. God came down. Can I hear you say, God will come down for me? God will come down for me. I didn't hear you. God will come down for me. I said, I didn't hear you. God will come down for me. To see what I'm doing on earth that it gets to me. Hallelujah. Many of you are saying the reason God cannot use me is that I don't have ability. God is not looking for your ability, He's looking for your availability. And once you cannot avail yourself to Him, He will make Himself available. Get ready for my. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
the need of the hour. As members of the family of Trem enters a new phase in this ministry, God sent me this verse to give to you, Bishop Mark. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. Say to your next person, We are going to be one. one. In language, in action, in ambition, in effort, we shall be one. God said. And this is the verse for you, Konkwo. Add it to your motto for 1998. And now, say that everybody. I didn't hear you. David and Wilson, are you alive this morning? Let me hear everybody this way say, and now. And now. This way. And now. This side. And now. My family here. And now. All of this way. And, now. and the whole church. And now. And now. Nothing. Say now, nothing. Now, nothing. Open your mouth. Say from now, nothing. From now, nothing. Sha. Sha. From now. Nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Take the limit off. Oh, come for you are the one I'm talking to. If you are really going to answer your new name, a junior brother to Archangel Michael, you are not going to be. Like Michael, the uh, Archangel Gabriel. There are three Archangels in heaven. One of them backslided. Archangel Lucifer was the head of choir in heaven. Archangel Gabriel is the Archangel of good news. But Archangel Michael is the one that holds the sword. Archangel Michael is the rebuker of every strange spirit. Archangel Michael is the one that said to poverty, Stop it! Sickness, stop it. The word in Greek and Hebrew, rebuke means put a stop. Oh, that is enough. How many of you want poverty to say that's enough? Or when I say poverty, say that's enough. Poverty, sickness, I don't have, I don't know where to go. I'm confused, I'm very tired. No money in my pocket. My wife doesn't give me food. Everybody's against me. I don't know where I go from here. From now. Say from now. Say from now. Nothing shall be restrained from me of anything I want to do for God. Stand up. That is the manifestation that nothing from now what Paul did is good. What Peter did is good. What Ora Robert has done very wonderful. Billy Graham and Mabel. T.L. Osborne unequal. Benson Idahosa yet to be caught up with. <laughs> but the next greatest thing to happen is you. Yeah. I'm not sure you are hearing me. The next miracle is you. The next miracle is you. I said the next miracle is you. Nothing shall be restrained. God didn't say yesterday, say from now. All my legal friends, I hope you are hearing me. I put it to you that God is telling you the truth. From now, say that. Tell your neighbor, say from now. From now. Say it again. From now. Nothing shall be restrained from whatsoever you want to do from now. The limit is broken. For trends, the limit is broken. 
Oh, my Baheki Labaya. For you and your wife, the limit is broken. For poverty, the limit is broken. From I don't know what to do, the limit is broken. From down cast, the limit is broken. From today, nothing shall be restrained from you. Somebody say big amen. Nothing. Say nothing. Nothing. One more time. Nothing. Shall. Be restrained. From me. That I want to do. That is the gift God gives me. So put your strength from today. Bow your heads and join hands with somebody. Ephesians 2 20 says, Nothing you determine to do, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. How much you want to be determines of how much you want to be. No man can limit you from today. <laughs> This is the first breakthrough that man had. Children of men build tower and build city. And God said from now, nothing shall be restrained from them. Who they determine to do. And I am glad I have the apostolic audacity and divine capacity to put in your life the power to do what you want to do. Is there anybody who wants to build a house? It's possible. Is there anybody believing God for a wife? Yes. It's possible. Yes. Is there anybody believing God for a husband? Yes. It's possible. Yes. Is there anybody believing God for money in their bank account? Yes. It's possible. Yes. Is there anybody who wants to be richer than where they are now? Yes. It's possible. Yes. Somebody say, Hallelujah! Yes. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, here I trim the ground of your power. I bow my knee. So thank you for Bishop Michael Konkwa and Peace of Konkwa and for the ministry you entrusted to their care. And now, Lord, according to your word to me to prophesy and say, nothing shall be restrained from them. And for every member present and absent today, the limit is broken in the name of Jesus. The limit is removed in the name of Jesus. The limit is removed in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. I bow my knee to ask you, Holy Spirit, to visit your people with divine ambition. As I rise to my feet, I leave poverty behind. I leave sickness behind. I shoot everybody up in the name of Jesus. I declare you prosper in the name of Jesus. Be rich in the name of Jesus. Be well in the name of Jesus. Be alive in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Lose your hand and raise it up and ask God for something tangible. Lose your hand and raise it up. Ask God for a miracle. Ask God for a miracle of your own. Ask God. The things that are impossible with men is possible with God. It's 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 lift your hand and work it and praise God. Ask God for a miracle. Ask God for a miracle. In the mighty name of Jesus.
Open your mouth and ask God for something. 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 Your light is come. Ask God for something. Jesus. Open your mouth and say, Amen. Open your mouth and say, Amen. Finally, Rachel said, the Lord has taken away my reproach. Yeah. I stand here to say anything that will limit to you is removed. Yeah. I stand here to say, if you ask God three things today, He will give you four. Yeah. If you ask Him for one, He will give you two. He yeah. will be done, He will be done, He will be done, He will be done, He will be done. Yes, it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your seat. Oh, do this with me. All my limits are removed. The Bible says, Ye are the sons of God. It's time for sons of God to manifest. 25 years ago, Bishop Mike, 1972, our total headquarter income was about 12. Well, let me not miss the figure. We were not getting up to 100 now. About 12. Well, let me not miss the figure. We were not getting up to 100 now a month in our headquarter church. Everyone you saw dance just now, either in university, finish university, or on the way to university. This year we have 317 people on scholarship. 317. I was told it's not possible. The job you do is not as important as the God you know. Some of you say my job is very bad. It's not true. God is a good job. Psalm 106 verse 1. God is good. Some people say the reason I'm poor is because I live in the village. Transfer me to the most remote village under the sun. Up to Djibouti where they have 240 goats and 240 human beings and 420 goats. I will still build a tower and a city. I believe that you cannot do more than what your mouth confesses. And I've come to ask you, mount up as you mount up. Amen. Use your mouth to change your situation. Amen. Something new is about to take place in trend. I left home, and Bishop Mike, I have to confess my sin to his hand. This is one of the few hands one that is son blessed. Oh, come on, you hear me, sir? This hand is blessed. And anything I touch surely must be blessed. So I want 500 of you. That I don't say millionaire, it's a billionaire. <laughs> you better hear me. Only one thing I've not been able to do in 40 years. Point your hand and say, What is that? What is that? You are a coward. Ask me. What is that? Say it louder. What is that? Hold your hand there. Point it fiercely to me. 
pointed wickedly to me and said, what is that? The only thing I have not been able to do in 40 years is what I don't want to do. <laughs> anything, anything. Bishop Mike is aware. I told him, since 1972, I've got three aircraft for the ministry. I dash it to people. But priority is different. That those blessed to ride planes and blessed to build poor people's lives. That's why I'm in Benin. I love those of you in Lagos, but thank God for your traffic. I don't have it yet. <laughs> it took me two hours yesterday to enter my house. If I was in Lagos, I would have translated by now. <laughs> You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowsa's level of faith. 
beyond mass uh, explanation. They had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high and the low in society. A man who rubbed shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It's a blessing, and it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh, yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God on getting there. I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odicha. And we went to put posters all over Odicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, 
I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin uh, my class. Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Hose University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us and I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Daosa. We said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me. And you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes and the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were under, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. Now this is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? I was scared, I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ibnidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here, there won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then 
was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. He does have started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said there, uh, Oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take off the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, we, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland and when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. 
Oh, I know, I know. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, I What's up, boo? Monkey, what's up, boo? And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, waded through the crowd. And he came and I said, ah, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. See, this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? Am I waiting like God? Again? 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 Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate, and he said, "Oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it." I said, "How? How are you going to do it?" And he said, "Okay, go out if you don't want to see see me do it." But uh, you know. As a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door, I stood at the door with my back laid at the door, one one eye on this side and one eye on the front door, and he prayed. Child, be healed. After he prayed, he asked me, "What is the name of the child?" What's in me the girl name? I say it's in Warata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Benson in the house. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the house. I said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the in the ordinary native daughter tried they can't raise her back to life. Said, where is her now? He said she swam in there. Said he asked my father the question. He said, Daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life? My father said yes. So 
he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where yeah, they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock slays. Another day died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Super power. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, mm, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? He said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the 
the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two guests, and two boys and six guests. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers' pictures, 
click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I would like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a compound where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938. To a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bata Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven the room was filled with the presence of god as benson fell to his knees before the lord wherever you want me to go i will go he prayed through the night 
renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981, from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree, he also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme so winning was in Daosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa. According to Mrs. Gordon Frader Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager student from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecasts. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. 
He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa Evangelistic Ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminars have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. It also was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The Secret of His Success it also operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic. Hard working, one of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Dowser. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Benson Dowsa was said to be the leader of over seven million. Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members he was very active and converting many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable qu quotes including my god is not a poor god your attitude determines your your attitude determines your altitude it is more risky not to take risk 
I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ray Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.